Martin, it was a long time coming, but finally Chris Baird's goal gave you the three points against Aston Villa. You were delighted at the end of the game. Has it been a good week subsequently? Of course, it was at the end of a lot of games for most of the players, international players. So the first thing we did was gave them two days off, and that is what they deserve to get back and to get them fit again. And then we started on Tuesday, and of course today we worked on a few things and a few different things. Of course, we've got the options up front with Berbatov and Petric, where we can play with Berbatov and Rodriguez. Brian Roos is still there, like we did, for example, against Southampton to play Rodriguez and uh, and Ruiz, so we've got different options and that is good, that is a luxury problem, but of course uh, you can't do all these combinations in training all the time, but we still try to maximize our uh, opportunities, so we've got, uh, Damien Duff for example was ill this week, De Jaga did well on the right, but I still got different options as well, I tried Rodriguez for the first time, because Duff was ill, and of course he's a striker and uh, we beat him 1-0 and in hindsight everything is fine but of course Rode Jäger is not an ideal and a perfect solution for that flank, I saw that and in the second half after a few changes I thought that uh, we've got a few options in midfield as well after the changes with Diara for example, uh, with Karagunas, uh, with De Jaga, they um, proved me that uh, Hopefully the future is ours because they can play, they are eager, they are eager to show what they can do and that is what I want, you know, rivalry for places, competition. Having all of the players out there, which has been I think probably a first for you in terms of no injuries other than the long term to Simon Davis, it must also give you a bit of a headache because you've now got a full squad to choose from and keeping all of the players happy during that must be challenging also. I forgot to say that over the last couple of seasons I didn't have that uh, situation, that I had a lot of players, you know, to exclude them, put them in the stand. And last Saturday was the first time. I, uh, there was a few youngsters not happy they had to go in the stand because you can only use 18 players. And uh, that is why we decided to put a few youngsters on loan. So if there is any clubs, you know, good clubs. Uh, who are interested in a few of our youngsters, I would be willing to talk about that because it's probably not ideal to got young players not playing in the first team, playing in the reserves and so I need to create my own uh, space and that is what we try to do because we've got 24 players, I've got six youngsters in that 24 players so there is not, uh, of course Kaka for example is still there, Brixy made big steps, you will see that in the future but I've got Kieran Richardson who can play left back, fill in as a left back, John Anneri is doing well. So maybe it's time for a few youngsters to go to a club and play for a month. That is ideal, you know, in England you can play for a month, come back. So hopefully uh, we get the space uh, to uh, to play a few youngsters, to, to loan a few, a few youngsters to other clubs. And uh, uh, as I said, I could say it's a luxury prob uh, problem and that is true. but. It's not the whole truth because sometimes players who uh, played like Trotta, you know, sometimes he was in the squad. But I've got three strikers and I've got one on the bench, say Petri's on the bench, or Rodriguez on the bench, or by who is there is no space for, for example, Trotta, who still is learning his trade and develop his game. So for him, it would be, for example, good to go to another club and, uh, and, and play there one, two, or three months. Much has been made of Fulham's travelling record, but I know that you actually don't agree with what a lot of people say I about Fulham on the it. road. I agree with it, but that means that 13 or 14 clubs got a terrible yeah. away record because even May United would say our away record is not great because of course, yesterday somebody told me that it's only Man City, Chelsea and May United who's got a better home record. That's nice to hear, mm -hmm. but I feel that our away record is, is yeah, you could say bad, you could say uh, decent. Uh, Last year we had four away game, games, uh, we won four away games, we had a few draws and there was a few teams doing, you know, not as good as we did, so the, for me it's always a bit, you know, the half, uh, the, the glass is half full or half empty, I'm not happy with our away form, but uh, we have to improve on it and how many games did we play away, we, we lost 3-2 against Man United, we had a, a win against Wigan, we had a draw against Southampton, so as long as we can have a, a result, a draw or a win, yeah, I would be very happy. But of course, that that is not possible, you know. Not even for Man City, they lost against Ajax yesterday, three-one, you know. So they won't win all their away games with. I think they spent 500, 500 million on players. So 
uh, I'm always a bit uh, annoyed, you know, if they say you're away from is not good. No, it's not good. I agree. But it's not disastrous. Yeah, and it's not just us, as you say. Going to Reading, though, presumably all of the pressure is on them. They have yet to win at home, so they have the expectation of that. It, does that take the pressure off you as a, as a travelling team to go there, or is it equal? It's equal, because if you look at them, the, the results were always close. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see, for example, the Newcastle game, they could have won that game. Uh, they played 4-2. Four four uh, they did it last year. They were a revelation in the championship. They did ever so well, got promotion. It's not easy to play against them. So if we want to play our own style, it won't be easy. But if you play their style, it won't be easy either. So we have to do, and that is what we did in training today. You have to come up with a few things, you know, and hopefully the quality we've got. And they've got two or three quality players, but we've got, of course, our quality. And if they can make the difference up front, you know, I'm very optimistic. And up front is Pavel Pogbregniak, who you'll be saying hello to prior to the game. Hopefully not popping up and scoring a goal as he did for Fulham in his loan period here. I don't want to talk about that because I'm not superstitious. But if you talk about these things, you know, everything can happen. But uh, we try to avoid uh, the service, you know. And we know that he can be lethal in the box and he's, he's a good player. And I was very happy with him, you know. He helped us out. He came over, scored his goals. He helped us. We get a new spirit again because uh, we had uh, a couple of players who wanted to go and then he came in, he did ever so well, so it was, yeah. I was ever so pleased with him. And, and don't forget that there was no option, so there was no option for us. We couldn't, uh, of course we asked for it, if you do well, Pavel, can we get an option, so yeah, would you sign another year? And he said, I will come to Fulham, I will prove myself, and after the season we will talk again. And that is what he did. So we couldn't complain about it. He helped me, he helped the club, and uh, he decided to go to another club. He told me, because of course I spoke to him, I texted him, I was in Spain, and he had, you know, with pain in his heart, he went uh, to another club. Well, we wish you luck on Saturday at Reading. Okay, thank you.